Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be telling you the story of how I had my little second bout of kidney stones, which is really great, and uh, yeah, so let's just get into it. So on Monday, it's Friday, just so you know, um, this Monday I was feeling fine all day. I went to volleyball, everything was good. Then at 6 p.m. I started feeling a little weird, and I knew that feeling so I was like hmm I don't really know I don't think it is a kidney stone because I already had one so I think it's gone now but that was not the case okay <laughs> so I felt it for a, a little bit sat down on my computer did some work I was okay then the next thing I know it was it hurt too bad that I couldn't like sit down right I couldn't talk it was kind of hard to like think you know when you're in a lot of pain you just kind of seize up and just want to get out of pain. So I took a shower, it kind of felt better, and then I started vomiting every 20 minutes. I had to stay up all night because I couldn't, I could not find a comfortable position to sleep in. Um, my parents stayed up with me and uh, at 2 a.m. we just decided we should go to the ER because last time when I went to the ER they just fixed me up and it was good. So we went to the ER uh, there was no wait, so we just went straight in. They gave me an IV, as you can see, all the marks on my arm left from the tape. They gave me an IV with pain medicine and saline, so fluids. Um, and within probably 20 minutes of getting the IV, I started feeling better. Um, because I'd had this before, there was no doubt, like there was last time. The doctor knew that I was gonna, it's just gonna be like this for me, so. They just gave me the same medicine I got last time, and I started feeling better. Um, I was only there for three hours. Once the saline bag was emptied, uh, they just uh, let us go with some some medicine, the prescription of the uh, stuff that I got through the IV, because it targeted because it targets um, pel the pelvis area and pain down there. So I guess that's why it helped me. Um, but before, I guess I did mention that during the night I was trying to use the pain med or the I was trying to use the nausea medication that they gave me last time. But actually, I, t I took that and then I threw up right after, so I couldn't have that or Motrin or Tylenol. I tried all of it, didn't work. So the hospital was just the way to go, and I guess that's how how it's gonna be like whenever I get this again, and I know I will, which is very sad to say, but. So after I went to the hospital, they were like, you are good now, you can go. Um, I had to do two tests because they weren't sure the first time if I had an infection. And if you have an infection, then you have to get surgery to get the kidney stone removed because it can actually damage your kidneys. If there's an infection, like a UTI, or um, if the infection gets bad enough that you get a fever, it's like very bad. So I thankfully didn't have that. They did another test. So I was good, and we just went, got the prescription, and went home. I was feeling better all day. I think I only took Tylenol twice, and that made me feel good. So I didn't take any medicine from there on out. Um, they did want me to schedule a specialist appointment and get a um, ultrasound to look and uh, look for more stones. So Tuesday was the day. I went to the hospital. Then Wednesday, I stayed home from school again. I just kind of was working and recovering, um, just a lot of resting. And then Wednesday, I had the appointment with a specialist and um, at a bigger hospital. And the specialist, I think I went to a urologist. So they sent me to get an ultrasound. So I got an ultrasound. They just looked at like the fr front on the kidney um, and the back too, and so I had the pain in my right side on my back, just like where your kidney is. Last time I had it on my left side, but um, after looking at the after looking at the ultrasound, they found that there actually is another stone, possibly multiple, in my left kidney. So I am not done with this, sadly, and um, now I'm being very, very careful, but I'll, I'll get to that, uh, what I can and can't have and do and stuff, um, but 
after I went to the ultrasound, I saw a kidney specialist, the, the urologist, and he said that this is getting more common um, for girls between 15 to 19. Um, and they just need to be careful with their hydration, um, salt intake, and try to um, not eat beets, spinach, um, and kind of a bit fewer potatoes. Um, I just need to try to drink one and a half liters every day, which is a lot of water, as I've been finding out. Um, I have this giant Nalgene bottle, and I have to drink one and a half of those, so that is kind of a challenge, but I've been doing okay, except that I have to, like, go to the bathroom every, like, hour. It's a, it's a lot. But, yeah, so that's what the, um, the urologist said, and he said that I'd have to get a test kit. It's an at-home test, right? It's a collection, and you send it off to the lab, and they basically tell you, um, what is going wrong in the levels of your body and what minerals you have, I guess. So, um, I will have to do that. My mom ordered it, so it should be here in a couple weeks, but I'll have to do that on the weekend day because it's all day, and then I have another appointment scheduled in November for when they'll do another checkup, possibly another ultrasound if they see something on the, um, on the test that I have to do. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. It's going to be, I'm going to have to be very careful with my water intake, as I said, but also try to limit salt. So my mom and I have been ta um, keeping track of everything that I'm eating and how much salt is in it so that we can make sure that I am at a healthy level. And the average American does have a lot more salt than they should, but of course, I cook a lot of my food anyway because I'm gluten free, so a lot of my food does, not the food that I make, but any gluten free thing that you um, buy at a store usually has uh, more salt to compensate for the flavor. So that is one thing, especially like bread, but now I'm making a lot of my own stuff. I was before, but it's even more now. Um, and let me see, yeah. So then after I saw the urologist, I had to go down the hall, whatever, to see, um, to get some blood work done. You can see on my arm, you can't really see it, but on my arm. And it took so long, like the lady had the needle on my arm for a very long time. And now I have a blood blister on my, like, on my arm, but that's okay. Thankfully, I am not scared of needles. I kind of was a little squeamish, um, like before the first time I had a kidney stone in July, but now that I know hospitals just, they just make you feel better, because I've had these experiences, it, I'm just not afraid of it anymore, which is, I'm thankful for, but I'm also, like, not thankful that I've had this, but I'm thankful that I don't have anything worse. So, yeah, that's basically my story. Um, if you guys want an update later on, like, after I do the test and get the results back or after I see the doctor again in November just let me know um, let me know if you've had any kidney stones or anything um, like that and yeah I will see you guys later bye